Hello everybody and welcome to Leighton Junction. This is Leighton Junction Junior and today I'm going to be fitting an extra bass speaker to this Class 43. So uh, this is the extra bass speaker that I bought online. And believe me, these speakers are good. They do sound very, very nice. So uh, all in onwards and forwards and I'll start the video. So if you notice, what I've done is I've already uh, tinned the two ports here that are on the PCB. Now, when I do chips, I tend to cut the speaker off and I tend to attach the speaker to the speaker ports, which are there and there on the PCB itself. Now, I'm not sure why nobody else does this, but that's dealer's choice for me. You know, I mean, you, you might like to put it onto the chip or whatever, but I tend to use the speaker ports if they're there. So if you notice, what I've done is I've already tinned it, which I've used uh, the stuff I used to tin with, which, uh, hang on a minute, I've just had it in my hand, which is this tip tinner from Fernotronics, which is absolutely brilliant stuff. And I fluxed it before that to help it to stick properly with my fluxing pen, hey presto, chip quick Q CQ4LF. No clean liquid fluid and basically what you do is to use it, you basically just put it on, press it down and then press the, that's a little bit of flux out and there you go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to quickly solder the speaker on. Uh, I've already tipped the ends on the speakers so I don't need to worry about doing that. So I'm going to start off with the red wire. Now usually I used to use... Uh, uh, helping hands to do this with but now that I've got glasses and I can see properly I can do it with the glasses so there you go that's the red one, red one connected first time then the black wire oh a little bit of slippage there oh I might not have enough wire I might have to ask Alan to strip it for me oh no I've got wire I just couldn't see so black wire There we go, and there you go, and as you can see, the speakers are now connected. Red to the red, black to the black. Happy, happy doo doo. There you can see, oh, and the black's come off. Don't you hate it when a plan doesn't come together? So it's all right, I'm just going to reseal this black wire here, which decided it didn't want to stick. But, you know, these things happen when you're trying to live, live stream something or do something live. It's always the same, but it always happens. You know, you end up, like, having a wire that just doesn't want to stick. There you go. And there you go, the black wire's connected. And that's that done. So, uh, usually, I mean, you don't really need to uh, use a load of, like, insulation tape. Uh, I don't. I mean, I've took my wires around there, as you can see, that are coming off the chip. Uh, but apart from that, it's, you know, dealer's choice for me. Right, so I'm, I am going to say in the Class 43, the square extra bass speaker does not fit. So if you're wanting to put an extra bass speaker in, the circle one does. And I've tried it, I took the frame off, but you will have to take the fan thing on the inside out. You have to take that out of the chassis on the inside. And the two little nug, nub, nugs or whatever they're called, lugs, sorry, that come down from it for the screw holes, you have to snip them off and then it will fit. And then you'll be able to perfectly fit a round speaker in there. So I hope that helps a few people out there who are wanting to uh, fit extra B speakers to the Class 43 engines. Uh, the chip itself is a blank chip, it's a 21 pin. What I'm going to be doing is now I'm going to be going off, I'm going to blow the chip with the V200 sound from the ESU ECOS site. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come, I'm going to do a video of me blowing the chip and putting the sound on it and then show you all a test video of what this engine sounds like with all the sounds on. So I'm going to leave you now, go off, do me thing, and I'll speak to you shortly. So bye for now. Hello everyone and welcome back at Leighton Junction. This is Leighton Junction Junior joining you again. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly show you 
uh, what I had to do to actually get that, be that round bass speaker to fit. So on the inside of the Class uh, 43 Worship shell, here we have put the uh, fan back in with a little bit of blue, with a little bit of black tack. There was another like connector like this, but it was a big massive one and like it doesn't really do anything. So I had to take that out, cut that lug there, that lug there, cut that lug there, and that's it. And then basically if you watch, once I've done that, he pressed up, the body goes on fine. And as you can see by that, it fits perfectly. And it will screw back together perfectly. And that absolutely brilliant engine, the Class 43. One of my favourite engines. And as you can see, lovely little engine. And uh, once I've got the sound loaded onto it, it's going to be even better. So that was that for you. The next thing I want to do, quickly go over you, with you, is the lock programmer. Now I bought mine last week. And it uh, came for the post quite quickly, which I was quite happy about. So this is your lock programmer. So this connector here, which I've already screwed on, sorry. But this plugs on, and that, as you can see, goes to your PC. So I move out a bit. That goes to your PC. This connector is for your DC power connector, which is, you get one with it, which is here. Which is a 12 volt power connector, which comes with a which comes with a British plug adapter on it. So obviously, with this being European, and then obviously your normal AC adapter connector on the end of it. Here, if you can see that, which goes into here. So you plug one of them into there. So the next thing you want to do, or is Next is track out. This goes to your track. Obviously, you attach your two bits of wire. Screw your two bits of wire from here to the piece of track that you've made up. Which, here's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> so, from there to there. Then, you can put your engine onto the track. Load the drivers onto the PC. And then program the engine. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out now because I'm going to do the rest of the video on the computer. And then what I'll do is I'll do the next part of the video on the desktop here in my computer room. Showing you what the engine sounds like and what it sounds like with the, with the chip blown. Because at the minute the chip in it is a blank chip and I'm going to blow it myself. So I'll speak to you very shortly. Bye bye. Hello everyone and welcome back to Leighton Junction. This is Leighton Jr. here again. So the next thing I'm going to do with the lock programmer is I'm going to put power going to the track from the lock programmer so we can program the engine. So Valen, if you want to take it away please mate. So obviously you're just putting a bit of power to crocodile connectors. And then there's like a green power connector with two screws that you get, which makes life a lot easier. And then you just basically push it into the front of the decoder. And hey presto, job done. So uh, that was happening in the video, and as Alan's just done there. Ta da! Right, so I'm going to jump back to the computer and I'm going to read the decoder and read the decoder information. So bye for now, and I'll speak to you in a minute. Hello everybody and welcome back to Leighton Junction Junior. So uh, this is Leighton Junction Junior here, Richard, as I'm called. Hi everyone. So uh, what I've done is now I've uh, read the... Uh, I'm going to read the decoder that's in the locomotive, the Class 43, which I've fitted an extra bass speaker to, which I'm going to download the sound for and show you how to load the sound on. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to read the decoder itself. So if you hang on two minutes and basically what it will do is it will read the decoder and it will basically tell you it's a lock sound version 5. It's 128 megabits of uh, flash memory. Now the lock sound version 5 uh, chips have got hi-fi stereo sound with them and they do sound very nice, especially with the extra bass speakers. So I'm going to go to the ESU site and download the sound file that I'm going to use. 
So basically the first thing I'm going to do is go to ESU, press enter, then I'm going to log in, oh it's already logged in sorry, so I'm going to go to download, sound files, lock sound version 5, then all I'm going to do is type V200 in there, because that's the sound file that I'm going to use. Then obviously it comes up with quite a few uh, offerings for the version 5 family sound chip and the sound chip that I'm going to use, sorry the sound file that I am going to use is the lock sound version 5 factory equipped sounds. Now this is a demo video and functions and I'm just going to give it a quick play for you so you can hear what some of the sounds and that sound like on the engine and then you can hear for yourself before I put it onto the track. So I'm going to sit back for a minute and let it play. Which Bitte I'm going to der change to English ones in the sound settings once I've got the sound settings on there. Zum so as you can tell by the sound there, the engine sounds pretty nice. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to download the sound file. So I want this 94471 lock sound, lock sound 5. I agree to everything here, including if it blows up, then it's my fault. So accept. Then you'll get a download here. Then show in folder. So then I'm going to copy this to my desktop. So I'm going to paste it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this and I'm going to write the code data. So, so I'm going to double click this and lock sound will automatically pick it up. A new version is available, okay. And then basically I'm going to tell it to write the coder data. Update the coder configuration, yes please. Next, and then just leave it to write the coder data. Now it should take about four or five minutes to do this. So if you bear with me while it writes the decoder data and uh, I can give you a quick look into some of the other things that are here. Now I found in here the driver's cab. I have had a little mess on with this. And when you press go on here, you can like check your lights are working. You can like check the sound on off. Right? You can check, you know, where the handbrake radio conversation open close cab door and you can listen to them all on your bit of test track by going into the uh, driver's cab itself uh, the read write cvs uh, obviously you guys out there who like mess around with your decoders yourselves will know like the, the different decoder values will do different things i uh, i think i remember alan was telling me that uh, class that 63 
is to do with the volume, if I remember rightly. I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong. So the next bit here is the, the decoder itself. So on this part here, you can enter the address of the locomotive. So, uh, you know, if you want to leave it on uh, address three, which is obviously, as you all know, the default address for locals, then leave it on address three. Uh, you have information about the local here where it tells you what it is. Uh, German F5. It gives you all the functions F12, breaking functions, 17 break function one. And basically, you can look at all your different break functions in here, and it tells you what they do. Uh, the sound in here is where you can change your sound files if you don't like them. So if you don't like a certain sound file in there, you can change it over to like a different sound file, like the curve squeal. You can change that to like the sound library, uh, the lock sound template one, which I need to log, which I need to load in here, sorry. And basically you can change like one sound to another. So now that chip is finished reading and I can now go into the driver's cab, press go and listen to the different sounds. So first of all, I'm just going to do an engine start up for you. So if you listen closely, So it goes to F2, which is air horn, F3, which there's no function apparently. So let's find a whistle. So F10, conductor signal. Uh, let's see if I can find a uh, switch flange. So that's the curve squeal there. Obviously it has to be moving for that to work. Uh, so basically as you can see there, there's all your functions here. You can basically, there's the compress there. I don't know if you heard that with me blabbling over, but here again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off now. But I've written the sound to the decoder. And I'm going to take it into the back room and put it on the track. And then I'm going to do another video to finish it off to show you all, to show, to show you guys all the sounds and that that I've added to the local. And so you can get a proper like sound test of the local. So I hope you enjoyed my decoder video. Uh, sorry it's a bit long and I babbled on a little bit. But I hope you all enjoyed. And I'll uh, speak to you in a minute. So uh, bye for now. Hello everybody and welcome back to Leighton Junction. This is Leighton Junior and I'm just doing a follow up and finishing my video off. So uh, the sound file that I used was the Lock Sound version 5 sound for the V200 from the Lock Sound ESU site. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you how it sounds and what it sounds like with an extra bass speaker in it and go through a couple of the sound files with you. So the first thing I'm going to do is just show you the lights. So, I don't know if you can see this, but this is just the normal front rear light, as you can see at the bottom there. And then obviously, as you turn it to the different direction, that's like the front lighting system. So, it's got a few whistles on it. So, this is the guard's whistle. Which, as you can hear, is quite loud and sounds brilliant. This is coupling up. And done couple in there. Uh, this one is door slam. That is a door slam. There is a brake squeal there. I mean, sorry, a flange squeal, I think it's called, on there as well. But uh, obviously, I cannot do that with the local standing still, obviously. Uh, so, for what you've all been waiting for, this is what it sounds like starting up.
and I think if you'll agree with me, it sounds absolutely brilliant. And those extra bass speakers that you buy don't do them a lot of justice. So I'm just going to go through a couple more sounds and then I'm going to finish the video and uh, you can imagine for yourself and go and buy yourself some extra bass speakers. So this is one of the horns. Uh, this is another F of the horns. Oops, one moment. Sorry. This is the air release. Uh, I'm not sure where the other horn is because I can't find it. I really need Alan in here to do this because th this is his side of it programming all these. But as you can tell there, it sounds really nice. So what I'll do is I'll start it off and then you can hear it starting off and I'll bring it around and then bring it to a break and you can hear it breaking so after three one two three go and as you can see there it sounds really nice and it runs really smoothly and uh, I didn't have to make any adjustments which you would have thought in the breaking or the starting up you know like where it would jump I didn't have to make any adjustments there which was a good thing because I hadn't actually read the manual part of that yet <laughs> so I wasn't up to that bit yet but as you can hear the engine itself sounds absolutely fantastic and uh, you know it is a really nice sounding engine and uh, as you can hear when it will come around now you'll be able to hear it breaking and uh, the brake squeal on it sounds really nice and uh, if you'll agree with me these extra bass speakers are the business you know and as I said uh, I fitted this with one of the round bass speakers forget if you if you can remember the square bass speaker does not fit but the round bass speaker does. So it's gonna to come to a break. So I'm just slowing it down. And there you go. And that jump there was me, by the way, not the engine. It's because I slowed it down too fast. And as you heard there, you get a nice little uh, air release valve at the end. So there you go, so uh, I hope you enjoyed my video, uh, I hope you uh, all enjoy it, and uh, I hope you all staying safe, I mean, you know, don't take any chances people, this Covid thing, you know, is looking as if it's going to be here for a while, so you know, come on guys, everyone band together and everyone stay safe, you know, we've all got each other in the train community, you know, so stay safe everyone, and thanks for tuning in, take care, bye for now, ciao.